So you have seen we go off an algorithm here, ideally theta of n, more tighter bond. How, what is the, what the call intuition of that in practice here? But only pain we got it up in solution number three is extra space. Is there any way we can able to take it of the space at the same time we can maintain the time? Again, the only way to really get a betterness is to find this, see the, look at the existing solution. Is there any possibility of really making up betterness? Let's observe a little more deeper into the solution number three. So what are we doing in solution number three? We are trying to get into one single scan. That's definitely a good idea. Since I want to know whether one is repeated anywhere, I'm taking help of this extra array to look up quickly, you know, to find it repeated or not. This extra lookup is causing a space. How can you take up this space? If you take up this space, again, I have to do linear scan, which is not good. Or if not, I have to go for sorting. Again, n log n is coming up. Then I want in single scan. At the same time, I want take up space. How is it possible, Shiv? The first time, you may think that it cannot be possible to take up this space. But again, if you look at the problem statement, there's one more, uh, the same hint. If you observe again, the range is 1 to n minus 1. That means they're giving some kind of hint for us to come up with what they call some kind of elegant way to remove this space. Since the range is 1 to n minus 1, can we really what they call use what they call in place memory here? That means instead of going for external memory, can I really use the same array here to remember this true and flag kind of behavior? All I need is two states. First time I have seen, or is it so coming after first time? Since there's only two state information anyway, instead of going for an extra array, same array here, can I use what you call some kind of a trick where I remember element comes first time or it's coming up after first time here. So because range is one to n minus one, all elements are guaranteed to be positive here. So if element is positive means at some point, you know that it is what you call coming up first time. Maybe if I can use a negation for that, that means I'm disturbing the array here. I'm expecting the array to be mutable, array needs to be changed. But if that kind of flexibility is given to us, I can able to use the same array to remember this kind of, you know, two state information now. Let's make a more concrete understanding of this idea. Let me just take up this idea here. Now we'll, then we analyze it. So we call this a solution number four. Label, later we give it up. Let's take this data. So zeroth index, first index, size is 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. My original data is 1, 4, 6, 7, 8, 3, 2, 5, 5. Now, so previously when first we took 1, we are going to other array to look up. Now, don't go to other array, go to same array, means which is in place same place without extra space. That's what in place meaning. Now go to the one here. So see the element, it's positive. Positive means what? One is seen first time here. But I want to really flag it. Previously I updated false to true anyway. I cannot do some kind of a random thing update. If I do, I lose the data. Without losing data, still I want to remember one is seen first time. Since range is positive here, one to n minus one, I can apply negation make this number minus four. Now that means one is in first time. Now go to the second element. Second element is minus four. So take absolute of that, which is four. I'm not losing the data here. Go to the fourth index now. So it's positive here. Positive means what? Four is in first time. That's why remember that by negating the value over here. Now third element is six, absolute anyway, six. Go to 6 now, value is positive. 6 is seeing first time, remember that by negating the content of it. Now 7 here, now go to 7 here, first time is positive here, remember that by negating this. So I should not circulate because we haven't seen this. Now so 7 is finished up, minus 8, absolute value, take absolute here, go to 8 and away here, first time you are seeing it up negate this value and I should not do this. So minus 5. Now 3, go back to 3. So value is positive here, negate it. Minus 2 here. 
so take absolute value here go to 2 so positive now negative it here it's finished up so 5 here go to 5 first time negate it up it's finished up again absolute value 5 now go to this vertical 5 index but value already is negative that means we have seen 5 already once now we are seeing second time here that's why it's a duplicate here now written 5 as a duplicate so this is what the what they call the improvement you can think of from solution number 3 and it's possible only because in the current problem range is given as a positive issue if arbitrary elements would have been there both positive and negative so we might not really uh, you know this negation trick might not make any sense that's why for this problem that's how normal interview they always twist it they give some kind of hints they drop the hints anyway they want you to think take those hints take into the better solutions now the thought process how you really bringing a better solution is what they're always interested about it we don't want to remember the solutions but instead take the hints apply the mind at the moment keep on building a solution is what the essence of the you know the entry process so this is what item number what do you call four so just to summarize it we take the element instead of going to the lookup array we go to same array instead of making false as a true now we make positive value as a negative valuation now if if i go to the any index where value is already negative here means it's the second time we are seeing it up hence is a duplicate that's what this algorithm is all about what is the name we want to give for this kind of a thought process so here this seems to be specific to this problem maybe a kind of a negation trick makes sensible here again i call it as ad hoc strategy really call it as a negation trick we are playing it out on this problem Let's analyze time and space complexities here. So to compare with previous three solutions now. What is time complexity? What is space complexity? Again, what is the low level operation? Core low level operation we are doing it up as part of this logic is we take the element, we go to the index, we compare, is it positive or negative? Comparison. And after that, it might be required to really update to the neg negative value. So, Multiplying with minus of that minus one here is also other operation all this is some number of what they call low-level operations in general We can call this as C C is a constant number of operation for each element. We are doing it up and elements We are daily doing out C star n. So that's where maximum the worst case we require it So how do you really write it up? This is where we need it up theta of n we can write it up here so theta of n space is going to be constant because we are not using enough extra space here. Few variables are enough. So c variable c is constant units anyway. So that's where theta of n space is going to be go one here. But only issue here to really get this possible in practice was array should be mutable. Means we need to allow the array to get modified. If array is not possible to mute, then this solution doesn't make any sense. Even if you want to keep the original array back, you can one more scan you do it up. So make these values as positive here, then you don't lose content, but mutability is a must. That's what we call it as solution number four. So n algorithm and constant. And so th that's where if you really compare with all these remaining three solutions now, this is as good as solution number three, but space wise is much more efficient and efficient. Let's experience this idea also in the code to see it up, you know, to get better understanding about this algorithm four. Now, we saw the algorithm number four, where we are able to get n complexity at the same time, space constant. That means we are, avoid, we are able to avoid that extra auxiliary array we have used up in so algorithm number three, or solution number three. Now, let's see in practice how, how this guy really perform it up. Let's go to Python. So, I'll take this find duplicate three. And even timings also just copy. So we take find duplicate four. So we don't want this extra array here. Now temp is INP of five done. Instead of auxiliary temp, so we take an absolute first because we, we are we are mutating this. Take absolute of INP of five. If in of the temp, if the value stuff true, if it is already negative value less than zero then we got it up otherwise you need to update this to negative of the existing value 
star equal to minus 1 minus 1. Now return of this. So this is what in of temp 0 here. So there is no in INP here. That's what the red mark here. Here also INP. So we got find duplicate 4 ready. Now change this to find duplicate 4. Let's check the correctness of this algorithm. Run configuration for file. Let's start with the 10. So run here. Now you can see 9. Let me try for one more possibility where 100 I am giving up. Run here. So 99 here. Now let's look at scale. So run here configuration for file 100. 1000, 10,000, 1 lakh here, run here, 0 0.037, 0 0.037, find duplicate 4, 0 0.037 for 1 lakh. Let me rerun this in average 0 0.036, 1 million. Let's go to source, run sorry, configuration for file. After 1 lakh, now I am going to 1 million run. So you can see 0 0.291. 0 0.291. Let's try 10 million run configuration for file. So let me add one more zero, run it. Now you can see 2.936. 2.936 so 100 million I'm sure let me try that run configuration file 100 million run so it takes some time here so you can clearly see that in solution 4 we are using an absolute function and evasion so so in theory basically here even though we got n algorithm and also we got n log n algorithm the differences are in a practice those possible candidates very close candidates when implement it up you really get to know which guy is really doing very well that's why theoretical analysis is not a conclusive evidence to really pick up the best algorithm here the close by candidates you must benchmark it in this fashion then we can see in practice which can you know really fare well that algorithm we are going to take into final uh, you know final pickup and you can see still it's going on so 28 and so I'm sure there is an impact of what they call 28.913. That function I'm using it up. So which is uh, taking a lot of time here. Find duplicate 4. So I'm sure Python is not a very, very good performant, you know, language when you compare to other languages here. But within Python, the relative comparisons we can able to understand from this experience. So in summary, so when a problem is given it up here, so when I say inefficient algorithm here, you always have to think of what can work, you know, very good for large values of n. That's why. So always analyze for large values of n. Whoever is doing it up large values of n, that will be definitely one of the useful solution for, you know, for practice. So this experience should give up the clarity on. So how to really think about a problem? How to build solutions now? How to experience those solutions here to get some intuitive feeling of this? That's what the purpose of this video is.